Do you wish you were more intuitive, but you just can't seem to get out of your head and hear it? Well, that's because your ego doesn't want you to hear your intuition. Your ego wants to keep you in a state of fight or flight and survival so that it can stay in control. So I always ask my students, how's that working out for you? Because it isn't doing a very good job of reassuring you or giving you guidance or leading you to good outcomes if you listen exclusively to this fight or flight, fear and panic mode in your brain. My name's Sonia Choquette. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Today, I want to talk about how to get connected to your intuition when you have a very noisy, anxious ego brain that won't seem to let you. Well, the first thing to do if you really want to get into your intuition is you have to distract that noisy brain and the best way to do it is to have some fun. In other words, laugh and play and do something you enjoy. That calms your anxiety brain very quickly and completely shuts it down if you really immerse yourself into it. That's the benefit of having hobbies and that's the benefit of going dancing or going for a bike ride or, 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 or playing charades with friends. We only have problems because we focus on them. When we, when we change the channel and start playing and laughing, we go actually to our solution brain, which is our heart brain, our creative spirit, and we reconnect with the universe that wants to help us. You know, my mother used to say this all the time when she was alive, the situation is critical, but not serious. And that has been such a good frame of mind to go through life for me. It's like, okay, this is, this seems scary. This is stressful. But if I remain connected to my humor and I remain invested and prioritize having a good time, no matter what, the consequence is I also stay connected to internal guidance and the things that I fear I don't ever encounter. I just get rerouted and you'll end up just like me, directed to solutions instead of dead ends. Now, the interesting thing is the ego doesn't like to play. That's much too scary to let go. So one of the reasons why being playful and having fun is so valuable is it immediately invites you to be connected to your spirit, your authentic self, your divine self, the self that is unconditionally loved, supported, and connected to a universal matrix that will help you experience whatever you want. The ego self-selects out. It's me against the world and I'm all by myself. And so of course it's humorless, it's panicked. When you go back to humor and fun and play, you elevate and level up. Then you're in a new vibration. That's my spirit, there is no them. There's just us. I am connected to what will help me. And if I'm having fun, I'll also connect with a vibrational match that will bring in other people who want to have fun with me. You can try this just today. Just go through the day with the attitude that I'm going to enjoy the day and I'm going to let people know I am enjoying the day. So anytime someone says to you, how are you? So, you know, just for today, I decided I'm great. I have decided that I'm going to focus on what's good and makes me happy. And I've decided I'm okay. If you just try that, people might raise their eyebrows and think, well, you're kind of a weirdo, but I've decided I'm okay being a weirdo too. Just for today, I'm going to have some fun. Also, in that same vein, just for today, I'm going to do something fun. For example, I mentor and coach people around the world, and one of my students yesterday was convinced that she was having a full meltdown, nervous breakdown. And after we talked about it, it was all focused on every possible scenario that could go wrong. She beat herself up that she couldn't hook up her computer and didn't know how a printer worked, and her bike had a flat tire, and, and just catastrophized every inconvenience of the day and decided and concluded that that means I'm a loser. Now, you're on the outside of that and you think, well, that's ridiculous. But when you're in the inside of that, it all feels very real, as you know. Your ego brain, which I call your barking dog, can get really vicious and start attacking you the minute it feels it can. So I started helping her find the humor 
in all of the situation. She thought it was, we finally found that it was funny that her bike had a flat tire. Of course it had a flat tire. She hadn't ridden it in two years. And that the ridiculousness of how she was trying to inflate the tire. And we started seeing different funny versions of the same experiences. We started talking about hooking up computers and help anybody over 55 does not know how to handle technology the way you need to today and how it all fritzes out. And before we know it, we were laughing. 45 minutes of I'm a loser, five minutes of laughing. She said, you know what? Everything's okay. I'm going to go to a movie. I'm going to just check out. It's 90 degrees where I am today. I'm going to go to a movie. And she really was okay. She really popped out of the vortex of crisis and drama and worry that the third dimension dense frequency traps us in. It's not the only reality. When you get into that ego reality, it's no fun. You can't get to your intuition. You can't get to your creativity. You need to pop out. But when you get to the fourth and fifth dimension, which is the dimension of laughter and humor and fun and being present and available and expecting good things, it starts to flow. So you unplug from the bad frequency, the negative fritz your nervous system frequency, scare you, demoralize you, tell you you're a loser frequency, and you plug into the frequency that says you're wonderful, life's funny and ridiculous, let's enjoy ourselves. So you will never be intuitive in that third dimension ego frequency. It doesn't, your ego doesn't want to be intuitive. It doesn't want to be necessarily relinquish control. However, once you tap into your intuition, once you get to that higher version of yourself, that more elevated divine version of yourself, and you start listening and being guided by your intuition, guess what? Your ego relaxes. It's not the enemy. It's just not the boss. If you really want to train your ego to change, have it become the support to your, your spirit by saying, yes, okay, I'll go with that. But you have to have fun. That's the front door. Now, when you're in that third dimension crisis mode, you may not even think of one thing that's fun. When I was talking with my client yesterday, she couldn't think of one thing. I don't like anything. I don't want to watch TV. I don't want to see my neighbors. I hate knitting, which she loves. I don't want to go work in my garden, which she loves. I don't want to go walk on the beach, which she lives nearby and loves. Because that's just how that third dimension consciousness, that, that barking dog ego of yours starts to take over. It starts saying, bark, bark, bark. No, no, no. Everything's awful. But if you can find one way to make yourself laugh, one silly thing, you pop out, you're liberated. You get to go to that higher frequency. And the more you laugh, the more you heal, the more you become whole, the more your body quiets down, your nervous system relaxes, your heart opens, the more guidance you get and support. So if you can just remember that, then you won't ever get trapped in that vortex. But I want you to remember when you're in that mental state, it is an energetic field that you got trapped by. It's not who you are. It's not at all who you are. You are this beautiful divine spirit and you just wandered into a bad neighborhood and it's best to take the first bus out. And that bus is laughter and play. So remember the things you love. For me, when I get in the bad neighborhood, I have a playlist of disco music with ridiculous lyrics. And when I put that on, I immediately pop out. I put on Born to be Alive by Sylvester, Daddy Cool, which is such a ridiculous song. And the lyrics that mean nothing over and over again with a really good beat, I laugh. That does it for me every time. For you, it might be funny animal videos or baby videos. It might be just a good joke or a good podcast where people are telling funny stories. Just know that it might feel like an emergency, but it's not. The situation is critical, but never serious. That is your exit to a higher frequency and back to your spirit. And you know how you know it's your spirit when you get the guidance? It often does make you smile, if not laugh out loud. That is one of the ways you know I'm out of that third dimension bad neighborhood and I'm getting back to this higher frequency 
that really will take care of me, where I belong, where I belong in this higher, beautiful energy. So I hope that you find this tip useful. If you do, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you again. Thanks for tuning in.